Yeah, yeah, you started off with Cubic. Cubic, yeah, yeah. yeah. So was it as easy as you thought? You know, it, so it wasn't. It uh -huh. wasn't definitely not. Any regrets when you know going into it? No, no, no. I don't believe in in having regrets in any any. No, when you when you went into it. Yeah, I yeah. was I was frightened, a little bit frightened, really? but not regretting. Okay, okay. Walk, think, walk me through the journey. Uh, so what happened was during that time we we had uh, one container of juicer coming in. And I didn't have extra resources or money to actually hire a team to, to sell the product. Uh -huh. So I made sure I was the only one right. to sell it. Because I saw you in supermarket outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and I was the one doing yeah. the demo most of the time. Yeah. But one crazy thing I did was I, w I, I had to make it work. So what I did is I went out to one of the, one of the international ban bank and told them, um, let me demo to your bunch of customers and, and uh, their, their priority customers. And they, they said, yes. Uh, welcome to do it, Very but you supportive. need to have yeah. And they said, but you need to have a speaker, uh, a speaker who can bring on value in terms of uh, healthy living. This and that. And, so, and I told them right away. I said, yeah, I'll definitely get a speaker. I promised them um, the event. I promised them a speaker, but I didn't have any speaker in my hand. I went around and I tried to look for speakers to come into Brunei. There, there was no one available, and during that time, I had to make myself a speaker. Wow! And that was my first uh, time doing public speaking in front of an audience that was uh, around thirty people. How was it? Um, it, it was. Uh, I got really anxious, <laughs> <laughs> exciting, uh -huh. but it, it was an experience because uh, I didn't know that, that that I could do it. And it worked out, and uh, we have people buying the products ever since then. Wonderful. Yeah. So you sold? I think we sold around 12 juices. That's so a huge conversion rate. Yes, in terms of true, true demo and speaking, and true, yeah. It, that it must have been good. a confidence booster for you. It has been. It has been. But that being one of the success, we also had uh, downfalls because we had events that nobody came as well. Right. So could we continue with that model. So uh -huh. I continue to be the speaker and the one demoing the product in front uh -huh. of the audience. But you don't have a shop? I don't have a shop. So I went to restaurants and I offered the restaurants and the restaurant to invite their patrons to come in and listen to me talk. And at the same time, I gave a little bit of cut back to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's that's the deal that we made. Yeah. And that uh, sometimes the restaurant had people coming, sometimes the restaurant had zero people. So. Some days it was good, some days it was devastating because you have to commit a time and then you have to buy a lot of fruits to do the demo mm -hmm. this and that and that was uh, opportunity wasted as well. So a lot of perseverance. Yes, definitely. Uh, how, how do you manage your mindset for not being overly disappointed during downtime? Mm, the thing is how uh, fixated on your vision or how fixated on your goal are you, you know, and how how focused on you are you in terms of making it a success? So what was your goal then? My goal was to make sure that this business succeed. To clear the container or? To clear the container of, of product. At how many were there? There were 600 pieces in, in, the, in the container. <laughs> uh -huh. But at the same time, it was, more, it was more important for me to prove my point. Right. Because at that time, uh, I've said it earlier, uh -huh. my father wasn't on board. Uh, yep. He was okay with me doing it up on my own. Mm -hmm. But he didn't believe Your own saving. <laughs> with my own savings, but he didn't believe that it would work out. Uh -huh. So during that time I had to prove that it would work out because uh -huh. that was my only window in terms of doing something on my own and then making it work mm -hmm. so that I have more people on my back trusting me with more resources to do something bigger. That is uh, much harder than just simply coming out mm. to do something because mm. you have to break out of an mm. old baggage. Mm. Exactly. Wow. And in terms of cash flow, I didn't have extra money. What was the turning point for queuing? Um, the turning point was when I finished the container. When I, when I How finished, long did it take it? It took us six months to finish the mm. container. And for the first three months, it was one person. On the fourth month onward, I started hiring help. Yeah, but then it's still yeah. <laughs> that is uh, what well, you work seven days. Work seven days. Um, whenever somebody called me, I had I've done demo during the morning as early as eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it means I have to prepare at seven o'clock. I have demos that is at eleven at night that that stretches on to one a.m. at night as mm -hmm. well. It was at the convenience of the customer. That's oh. why my customers until today, um, those who have bought Kuvings from me uh -huh. personally, still call me on my phone number. It, it sounds like uh, 
you know, uh, a multi-level marketing model that you've adopted, but it's not. It's your own. Yes. Y- y- your own doing. Yes. Direct sales, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. You you could have uh, you know after three months by the sound of it, mm. uh, you, you could have had enough money mm. to start open up retail shop. Mm. It, it's a deliberate. Uh, strategy not to mm. go that direction. Yes, and still today there's no, you know, special specialty shop mm. for your products. No, uh, and you know it reminds me of Airbnb where you know, <laughs> your biggest uh, accommodation provider without any physical uh, building. Yeah, the the reason is um, this product was a product that needed a lot of demonstration and if you had a retail store um, you still need to demonstrate at the end of the day so customers are more comfortable to give you more time in their own home rather than in the shop sometimes when it comes to demonstration so they must trust you a lot to invite you to their home uh, luckily for Brunei market they're, they're quite trusting I haven't had trouble <laughs> anybody's home but there was an indication that the customer was really interested mm-hmm. so it was worth our time to go over to their home and actually to demonstrate uh, also the other reason why we didn't pick a retail space to actually because um, we didn't want the burden from the retail space as well mm-hmm. because it wasn't about rental only it was about getting a team Making, making sure that the, the, the location was made properly, properly and then it was looked after properly. Mm-hmm. So we wanted ourselves to be more flexible. Right. Uh, we wanted to then, but what we did was we went into rock shows. Uh-huh. We did a lot of rock shows, we, did, we were setting up in front of a supermarket. It's not cheap renting those uh, facilities. It actually can be more expensive, but you can, pick the, yeah, you can, but you can pick the times that you want to be there. Oh. Okay, okay. So for us, we believe that the weekends are has has more uh, foot traffic in uh-huh. terms of department stores and you know, malls and everything. Mm-hmm. So we went into malls and department stores during the weekends only. Right. So the other times that we have, we actually were doing more so the online publications, the uh, social media advertising. You supported us. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. And uh, together we inspired magazine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. No Thank problem. Brunei retail is dying if not dead mm. and then there's this uh, <laughs> this cuckoo thingy you know yeah. they're saying that hey, I'm in 10,000 household amongst you know one of the worst retail period in, mm. in Brunei's retail history is the answer in not having retail shop it, or is it something else what, what do you think is your success uh, not only in Brunei but everywhere else in the world. If you look at um, developed countries like Singapore, even in the States and everything, they are trying to move away from retail back to online. Mm -hmm. But one key thing that was missing when you move to online is you weren't able to let the customer experience the product as much. You might actually show them in video, you might actually show them, you try to give them good audio to actually Mm -hmm. tell them about the, the product. But there was no touch. So nothing replaces human touch? Nothing replaces. So what we thought was a good model was actually to not make our store a purchasing, a purchasing point, but actually an experience point. So when customers come in, we make sure that they actually touch our product. But we didn't allow the customer to pick the product and bring it home themselves. That's the cuckoo model. And what we did is we make sure that the customer just sign up and then we tell them we will deliver the product to your home and in, in, in turn actually build in a service element into our product. Right. So that's what customers appreciate. When they buy the product, they don't have to carry it themselves, they don't have to install it themselves, they don't have to worry about payment, payment first. What, all they did was give, give us their details uh-huh. for us to actually be able to go and install it. And no payment is taken until the product is satisfied. You can pay by installment. Uh, we have that option. Uh-huh. Um, fully funded by yourself. Yes. That is a huge leap of faith for the community. Yes, because the thing is, we, we believe if we actually didn't open up the financing option ourselves, what will happen is our, we will be limited to only the A or B market, which is those that can afford it yep. and the mid-income market. But the bigger uh, the market, mass, yeah. the mass is actually those people who cannot afford to buy right. a water purifier at $1,000 uh-huh. um, uh, one-off. 
So we made it an option available. Of course, it's calculated risk, mm -hmm. um, but it also opened doors to actually, that's why we could actually um, you know, supply to the mass market mm -hmm. in the terms of two and a half years to 10,000 households. Yeah. Are you able to sleep at night? Are, are there bad debts? <laughs> there are definitely bad debts. Mm -hmm. um, we, but luckily, before even we started this rental model, we know that collection is a very big component. So we built uh, actually a very strong team to look after that part. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of reminding, there was a lot of uh, making sure the customers pay. You screened them before you... you uh, we, we screened the customers. Right. Uh, there was other there was a few things that we can use as an indicator or whether or not they are a good payer or not mm -hmm. a good payer. Um, but slowly we're trying to relax that, that, that screening process because we still believe that this kind of product mm -hmm. should be available to everybody as well. Wow. Taking on that risk, um, it has its rewards. The rewards is I, I open up the door to actually a mass market.